Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100, a collaboration channel in which I do the Thursday review videos. Um, we do themes every single week, and this week our theme is ensemble cast films. Films which have no particular main character or main characters, but uh, a variety of characters that all get more or less equal screen time. For example, movies like The Breakfast Club and The Big Chill are uh, ensemble movies since they have no one particular main character. The movie that I wanted to talk about is Go. It came out in 1999. It was directed by Doug Lyman, who uh, prior to this had done Swingers with Vince Vaughn and Jean Favreau. Um, and uh, since then, he has done The Born Identity and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, and Fair Game with Naomi Watts and Sean Penn. And he's got a movie, a science fiction movie with Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt going to be coming out next year. Um, so yeah, pretty big cast of uh, people, some of whom were kind of sort of stars at the time and some uh, who became stars later on and some that never, uh, some characters really didn't go much of anywhere as far as their uh, careers went. Um, the, uh, uh, it's sort of like Pulp Fiction um, that it has three sort of story strands uh, that uh, you know one sort of plays out and then the next one begins and then the next one after that. But all the characters are kind of inter interconnected with each other. Um, here we have Sarah Polly, uh, who plays Rana. She is the main character of the first storyline, and she and her best friend Katie Holmes and Katie Holmes's twin brother uh, are basically looking to um, score some extra cash because Rana needs uh, to uh, come up with some money quick, or she'll be evicted from her apartment. Um, by the way, this takes place uh, on Christmas Eve. This movie. Um, so what she does is um, she meets a couple of guys. These two guys right here. We have Jay Moore and Scott Wolf. Scott Wolf, who of course was on Party of Five, and Katie Holmes, of course, was on Dawson's Creek at the time. Um, and what they're doing is they approach her at the supermarket where she and Katie Holmes work, and they say, "Hey, look, you know, we normally uh, get our stuff, our um, uh, our drugs, ecstasy uh, from um, the guy, other guy who works here. He's not here today. Is this British guy? Where is he?" And she's like, oh, he went to Vegas for the weekend, you know, but maybe I can help you out. She says, oh, great, here's our number, so uh, call me if you can score anything. Um, now, so sh her plan basically is to make a little extra money and save herself from being evicted by making this one-time deal, but things don't go quite as planned, and she gets uh, mixed up with the uh, dealer, um, <laughs> who's played by Timothy Oliphant, um, is the, I think the first movie they'd ever seen him in. I don't think I'd ever seen him in anything uh, prior to this. Um, so, uh, yeah, things get kind of messy from there. Um, and, uh, and then we have, of course, the British guy she referred to, who's played by uh, 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 Desmond Askew. And he's gone to uh, Las Vegas for the weekend with his uh, friends. Uh, they're played by Tay Diggs, Breckenmeyer, and James Duvall. And he, is, he loses his money pretty quickly in the game, so he runs around starting to get into some trouble. And eventually he gets Tay Diggs into some trouble as well. Uh, and they have J.E. Uh, Freeman on their tail. J.E. Freeman played the Dane, a, a mob enforcer in Miller's Crossing. Uh, so it's really good to see him again. Um, and uh, then the third storyline involves these two as the main characters. Uh, they're sort of dealing with the fallout of what happened in the first storyline. Um, and uh, they're dealing with this undercover cop who's played by, you can hardly see him here, it's William Fickner, um, who's uh, a great character actor, very, very sort of strange looking guy. And he's just, you know, he's a, he's a cop, but he's also just acting really bizarre. He invites them over to Christmas dinner with his wife, who's played by Jane Krakowski, and things just get kind of strange from there, really, really bizarre. Um, I don't want to describe in too much detail what happens uh, if you haven't seen this movie, because, you know, the fun of it is some of the surprises. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a funny movie, um, really sort of uh, unusual in that it's very, very casual about everybody's drug habits. Um, people, you know, people all over this movie are smoking grass and, uh, you know, taking ecstasy like it's no big deal. And uh, there aren't any real serious consequences for what anyone does. There's guns involved, there's chases, you know, and things like that. But uh, mostly everything turns out pretty all right for everybody at the end. It's a pretty lighthearted movie all in all. There's some pretty cool music in this movie. They use uh, Magic Carpet Ride, which was in Reservoir Dogs as well. Um, that's during a really great car chase in the Las Vegas segment. Um, one of my favorite car chases, actually, in a film. Um, and I also want to mention Melissa McCarthy. She's only in one scene in the movie, but she's a riot. This is like the first time I'd ever seen her in anything. Um, she's, you know, pretty young. And uh, she just basically has a scene with Scott Wolf and uh, Jay Moore. But uh, it was funny. I couldn't understand 
half of what she was saying, but she was just hilarious. It's really funny. Um, she uh, she's actually got kind of a friendly relationship with the screenwriter John August. Um, uh, she appeared in a short film that he did prior to Go, and then she had that scene in Go. And John August also wrote the screenplay for the first Charlie's Angels movies um, with uh, with Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz, and she has a small part in that as well. And then when John August finally uh, directed his first movie with Ryan Reynolds, she was one of the main characters in that as well. She plays an actress who is like the main character in a pilot for a TV series, and um, the network doesn't want to use her because she's not attractive enough. Anyway, Ryan Reynolds is kind of playing the John August character, sort of semi-autobiographical with some other fantastical elements sprinkled on, but uh, clearly they've got a, you know, a friendship there that's... Uh, uh, you know, has, has, has lasted for a bunch of years. So, um, but it was great again to see her. I'd sort of forgotten that she was even in the movie. Um, but <laughs> it's funny to see her. Uh, she looks so different now. And now, of course, she's a big star thanks to Bridesmaids. Um, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but this is actually one of the very first DVDs that I ever bought. Um, the other one was The Game, the David Fincher film with Michael Douglas. And the reason why I got these two movies first is because they had both the widescreen and the full screen version on the disc together. Um, and I like that because um, they're, they weren't shot with those lenses, they call them anamorphic lenses, that make them widescreen only. Uh, they're shot in a regular format, but they're framed in a narrow area which allows them to either blow up the center portion for widescreen or use the entire frame for you know television and home video and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, there were no 16 by 9 flat screens anywhere when this film came out. So I like that feature very much. So I got this and uh, and, and the game first off because they both had that feature. Um, this is a fun movie. I, I don't like it as much now as I did then, but, you know, it's pretty lighthearted and fun. Um, and so, you know, it's it's a good time passer at the very least. It's got some funny bits in it. You know, um, I especially like Breck and Meyer. Uh, he's he's a lot of fun in this movie, and um, and the uh, these two guys right here. They're, they're, I love Jay Moore. Jay Moore is a really really funny guy, but probably the guy who really stands out is William Fickner as the cop. He's just a really really bizarre character, <laughs> you know. Just just hits you with things unexpectedly. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's a good one. And I like Sarah Polly a lot too. And Katie Holmes, of course, she's like super cute here. Uh, you know, before she, you know, went and got brainwashed by Tom Cruise. Nice pre-Tom Cruise performance from her. Thanks very much for watching. We've got a new theme starting uh, tomorrow, of course. Uh, so please tune in for that and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment, of course, if you've seen Go. Uh, and check out the other guys' videos, of course. I think that's covering everything. Thank you.